start also with the assumption that this country, as one of the great powers that has lifted the great, the terrible shadow thrown across the world in the last five years, must retain its armed force and its willingness and ability to make swift use of it whenever nations such as Japan, Italy, or Germany get into the hands of either outlaws or maniacs. I assume that the United States Navy will be one of the great elements of that power, and I speak to you as a group of men who will be officers in the Naval Service. However, I'm constrained to remind you and your older associates of the Navy that while the trained Annapolis graduates are essential to our ability to conduct naval warfare, the support of the nation is essential to the support of the Navy and that the Navy that is successfully fighting this war is a civilian Navy. 3,900,000 Americans constituted of that number, 400,000 are officers, and only 11,000 plus of those were graduated from this academy. I remind you that the Navy has grown 30-fold in its enlisted personnel, 3.5 million today against 100,000 in 1940. Right now, we, have, we are up against the realization that to man the Navy that we hope and believe the Congress will provide for us after the war, we shall need very large numbers from the ranks of reserves who are now serving and fighting chiefly in the Pacific. The officers of the regular Navy in all commands must realize and accept the responsibility of convincing young men of promise that they have the same opportunities and the same chances that are available to the graduates of this academy. In other words, that the criteria of, of advancement are the basic American criteria, character, competence, and capacity for leadership. 